Hello friend, welcome to Marine Engineering Hub. This is your narrator, Chief Engineer Ravi Gupta. Today we are going to talk about FIVA valve. In today's video, we will see that what is the function of a FIVA valve. After that, we will see that how the FIVA valve is actuated and it works to help for the exhaust oil actuation and the fuel actuation. And after that, we will see that how you can confirm through the MOB panel that your FIVA valve is working fine or not. After that, we will see the injection timing of the fuel valve and then we will see that at which spool position what should be the signal of the FIVA valve. So friend, this is a complete video of FIVA valve which you are gonna learn after the end of the video. Those who are watching the video of Marine Engineering Hub first time, I want to tell you that Marine Engineering Hub is a platform which make video like this which will be beneficial for your MEO class exam, class 1, class 2 and class 4. So I request to all of you to please subscribe the channel and if you are right now giving the exam then join the membership and you can find a lot of video which are 8 unreleased which will be beneficial for your examination purpose. You can find the link for joining the membership in the comment box. So let's start the today video of FIVA valve. So first question is asked that where the FIVA valve is located. So the FIVA valve is located on the individual HCU unit. In individual HCU unit, the FIBA valve is provided. It means that if you have seven HCU unit, in this case, you will have seven FIBA valve. So this is the fuel oil booster. This is the exhaust oil actuator. This is the FIBA valve. This is the alpha lubrication for cylinder lubrication, and this is the various valve controlling the hydraulic cylinder unit so the hydraulic cylinder unit look like this this is where the fear wall will be installed this is where the booster will get installed this is where the exhaust booster unit will get installed and this is where the accumulator will be installed so if you see carefully here you can see the accumulator here you can see the fear wall this is the exhaust this is the fuel oil booster unit now this is how it look alike now let us see how the FIA valve look from inside. So this is the look of FIA valve from outside. You can see one block here and this is the block here. Now in a closer look it look like this. So basically the top part is known as PCB also called Parker Pilot Valve. The second part is the valve coil drive along with the pilot spool which control the activation of a FIVA valve and this whole body is called valve housing. Inside the valve housing there is a spool which is divided in two part. The first part on the right hand side is the main spool which is bigger in nature. The other part is the control spool. So if you see here this is the control spool and this is the main spool and this P this red in line is basically the pressurized oil the blue in line is basically the oil which is after actuation returning back to the system so P indicate the servo pressurized oil and blue indicate the oil which is been after actuation returning back to the system on the one end on the main spool end on the main spool end you can find a feedback sensor and on the spool other end you can find a control spool so this is how the inside of a via valve look like pcb valve call drive and the valve housing inside the valve housing there is a spool which is divided in two part main spool control spool the red part indicate the pressurized oil and the blue part indicate the oil which is returning back after the pressure is released back to the system. On the main spool end there is a feedback sensor fitted. So let's see how it works. So the Parker Pilot Valve PCB. So what is a PCB? Basically this PCB is receiving the signal from the CCU. So the PCB receives the signal from the CCU here. Okay. The CCU will say, okay, now is a time for you 
to actuate so when it receives the signal for actuation it will send that signal to the valve coil drive this valve coil drive is basically like a solenoid work on a principle of electromagnetism basically what is happening due to the when it is receiving a signal the coil is getting energized and based on the current based on the current which is received from the pcb the actuation oil will go from the pilot spool to causing the movement of the main spool one more time i will tell you the valve coil drive after receiving the signal will send the oil for the actuation of fuel or exhaust depending upon the signal received which will cause the fuel or exhaust oil actuation so the ccu is giving signal to pcb the pcb is sending the amount of current to the valve coil drive based on the valve coil drive amount of current received the pilot spool will allow the oil to flow as the oil will flow it will go to the pilot housing and it will go to the valve housing and based on the oil is flowing it will displace the spool either this side or this side so basically it will displace the spool either this side or this side and based on that the fewer valve will get actuated now if there is any fault in the signal in that case what will happen the fewer valve will go to the fail safe mechanism so what is fail safe so basically the fever valve will work on a signal from 4 to 20 milliamp 4 to 20 milliamp now if from ccu it receive a signal around 25 milliamp or it receive a signal of 3 milliamp in that case it means there is something wrong so it will go to a fail safe position in a fail safe position the fuel going for a actuation is stopped and the fuel and the exhaust valve is open one more time i will tell you if there is any erratic reading coming from the ccu in that case what will happen the fiva valve will go to the fail safe position in fail safe position what will happen that the fuel actuation will stop and the exhaust valve will be in a open position so what is happening the ccu is giving signal that signal is amplified and it is given to the valve coil drive the valve coil drive is actuating the pilot spool from where the oil is flowing causing the pressurized oil to flow either to the fuel actuation or to the exhaust valve actuation so now this is how the fia valve work now this is the housing of a fia valve now in order to understand this thing clearly we go to here directly now this is the scenario of a exhaust valve actuation so this fiva valve housing which you are seeing the p is a pressurized oil the pressurized oil is coming from here now if you want to actuate the exhaust valve the oil will go from here to the this side it means that if the spool move little bit this side it will create a distance which you call the oil flow from here to here when the oil will flow from here to here the pressurized oil will find a passage for the exhaust valve activation and the unpressurized oil the used oil will return back from the fuel activation to the system so here we see clearly so this is the block of a fuva valve this is the point which is the indicated by p the p pressurized point is this this two the pressurized oil will come from here now when we want to actuate the exhaust in that case the oil flow on this side this is the hole for the exhaust valve actuation when we want to actuate the fuel valve the oil will flow from here to here so what will happen when the exhaust valve actuation is needed it if then if the spool is moving it will create a passage from here to here 
causing the pressurized oil to flow from hair to hair can causing the exhaust valve activation when we want to activate the fuel oil booster the oil pressurized oil will flow from hair to hair and causing the fuel valve activation so it means that if we see the fuel block the top small part the top small part is basically the top small part is basically the exhaust valve activation hole the bottom small part is the bigger hole is the fuel valve activation hole the top center part with a bigger hole is basically for the pressurized oil and this is the return from the exhaust valve oil and this is the return from the fuel oil so now see this block let's see this block so basically what is happening here is a three block one block is for fuel valve activation one block is indicating a normal scenario idle condition no fuel activation no fuel activation exhaust valve activation and this is representing the exhaust valve activation so right now we are seeing the exhaust valve activation so what is happening when the valve coil drive is energized the pressurized oil will flow from here and it will go for a exhaust valve opening while the exhaust valve is open at that time the oil from the fuel oil booster unit which is already activated the fuel booster unit will return back from here to the system back to the system it means that whenever the exhaust valve is activated at that time the oil pressurized oil while flowing for the exhaust valve activation the return oil is coming for the fuel oil booster unit now same goes for the fuel oil activation now when the oil is flowing from here to here when the oil is flowing from here to here at that time the oil while flowing pressurized oil is flowing from here to here at that time what is happening the exhaust valve oil which has been used now is flowing back to the system from here to here okay so what is happening now when the fuel oil booster is activated at that time the pressurized oil will flow from here and it will go for fuel activation at that time the exhaust valve activating oil which is already been used now returning back to the system so this is how what will happen now let us understand from this spool now when the spool is moving on this side it is getting a passage which is creating the oil to flow from here to here at that time what is happening when it is moving on this side the oil is also returning back from here to here so this is how what is happening when the spool is moving this side the pressurized oil from here to here is going there for opening the exhaust valve and tfi is returning oil for the fuel activation is getting passage and it is flowing from here to here now let us see the fuel activation now suppose it is moving here so what will happen it will get a passage from here to here and when it will get a passage the oil for the this thing will get a passage and it will flow from return to the it was well oil return back to the system so this is how it will work now i hope the fear valve working is clear so the p is basically indicate the pressurized oil which is coming from servo oil 200 bar cba indicate the pressurized oil for the exhaust valve activation tva indicate the oil which is used after activation returning back to the system the same goes for cfi is the pressurized oil which is going for a fuel oil booster activation the tfi is the used unpressurized oil after activation returning back to the system now from the mob panel how you will make sure that your fiva valve is with the opening or not so in mop panel if you go to the maintenance and the troubleshooting part you will find here if you go to the maintenance and if you go to the troubleshooting part you can find the various event 
HCU, HPS, SCU even HPS even. So in HCU part, depending upon the cylinder which you want to see, you can find the different feedback. So here earlier I told you about the feedback. Now the feedback, this sensor is basically giving signal returning back to the ECU that whether the spool is moving or not. So basically the ECU which is giving signal to CCU for the activation is checking that whether the system is working fine or not. So from channel 17 the FIVA valve signal for activation will come from CCU. Now after the activation is completed the feedback will go through channel 30. It means the channel 70 from the CCU will see that okay I have given the signal for fuel activation. Now the spool is moving or not if it is moving the feedback sensor will send a signal to the channel 30. So you will receive a signal from on channel 70 as well as channel 30. So when channel 30 and 70 is giving signal it means it is working fine. Same goes for the fuel oil plunger. Now when the booster when you receive a signal and if you see that the booster is working fine or not that is also giving feedback to channel 31. That 31 plunger position stroke will give here and same goes for the 34 for the exhaust valve position. It means from the MOP panel you can make sure that when the FIVA valve is getting actuated through channel 70 the spool position will be indicated by the channel 30. After that the depending upon the signal basically the signal range from 4 to 20. So 5 to 5 to 11 5 to 11 is basically for the fuel actuation for the exhaust valve actuation 5 to 11 is basically for the exhaust valve actuation so if you are seeing a signal here from 5 to 11 then you will find a signal in the exhaust valve position if you are seeing a signal from 13 to 20 you will find a signal for fuel plunger position here so based on that you can make sure that whether your MOP from MOP panel that whole of the HCU unit is working fine or not. Now fuel oil injection timing basically how it inject injection start at 20 degree and it end at the 120 degree basically it means that injection start 0 injection end here exhaust open at 110 and close at 270. So this is the whole timing of a FIVA valve. Now as I told you that FIVA valve basically work on a signal from 4 to 20. So when it is in a 12 milliampere in middle position at that time no actuation, no fuel oil actuation, no external actuation take place. It means it is an idle position. But when it is moving from a signal 5 to 11 ampere at that time it is causing a exhaust valve actuation. When the signal is varying from 13 to 20, it means that it is doing a fuel oil injection. So based on the FIVA valve feedback, you can find that whether your proper actuation is happening or not. So friend, if you have learned something in today's video, then please do like and please do share our video. Now if you want to learn this video more, then please do subscribe to our channel and please join the membership. I guarantee you will find a lot of videos which are yet to be released. Thank you friend. Have a good day.